Hello, everyone. Welcome to the October monthly meeting of the Village Board. Um, October 12th. <coughs> Studio audience and the folks joining us online. This is the meeting when we hear from our the departments um, and standing boards and get an update on everything that's going on around the village. Um, we did have an executive session from six to seven to discuss pending litigation. Um, we have come out of that session by vote and are now entering the, the monthly meeting. And I would ask first for a roll call, please. Okay, Mayor Foley. Here. Deputy Mayor Woods. Here. Trustee Bozzi. Here. Trustee Starbuck. Here. Trustee Fatty. She with us online? No. Um, opportunity to request a vote to add or modify agenda items. I have no changes. Anyone else? Okay. Announcements. A few quick ones. Um, tomorrow is lawn and yard waste pickup, October 13th, Thursday. So put everything out in paper bags. Nothing put out in plastic will be picked up. October 29th um, is the bulk village wide cleanup day when Royal will be picking up um, all short sorts and manners of things. There is a, a list that's gone out. It's on the village website and it's gone out by email. We'll get it up on social media as well for what you can put out and can't. Um, but it's a pretty long can list. So this is the time to get your basements cleared. Um, the Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail has a parking shuttle and survey available um, now. And the board encourages village residents to participate in that survey. You can access it via our website or the village's social media or the Hudson Highlands um, Pure Trail website. Um, and last, bathrooms. The bathrooms, the public bathrooms at the bottom of Main Street will be open this weekend. Um, we want to thank um, uh, Jennifer um, Carlquist from um, Boscobel for helping connect us to a service um, that we, we are sharing with M&T and with um, uh, Boscobel. Um, we are the, the, the village is paying for the service, but it's uh, someone coming through and cleaning all of the facilities. So it's, a, it's an economical way to do it, and they will be open again this weekend. So thank you for your patience while we got that sorted. And thank you to Jennifer and the Chamber for partnership in sorting out that, that challenge. Okay. Um, reports from village departments is item five. Just want to remind the public that all of these documents. All the reports, the official reports are available on our website. We give them in summary here when we're together in the room, but if you want the, the nitty gritty detail, you can see them on our website. So first is Michelle Escalillo, the village accountant. Uh, hello everybody, good evening. Hi. Uh, just, hi, um, just wanted to go over a quick few things. Um, so good news, and I started a grant application um, for having four approved high impact like energy actions. Um, the village is gonna receive 5,000. Uh, we have about 60 days to figure that out. So working with trustee, uh, and we'll figure that out, hopefully, you know, in the upcoming weeks um, to bring it to the board. Um, the majority of the month was spent getting ready for the audit and then doing three days of field work. Our EFPR group was on site for three days. Um, they didn't have anything of note to mention. Um, they said, you know, some standard adjustments, nothing really that stood out. Uh, they'll do a formal report and then make a presentation to the board for the, vo the board to then vote on it. Um, but that'll probably take them, you know, quite a few weeks, you know, probably sometime in December. They'll do that presentation. Um, so the just a note for the public, I guess, and for us. Um, so since the CCA um, was stopped with Central Hudson, uh, the bills, we haven't received any. Uh, and Central Hudson, everybody knows, is having billing problems, and this just is on top of it. Uh, so if anybody hasn't received a bill from July, that's why, you know, communications went out. Um, but we're experiencing that in the village, too. So some of our batches are a little lighter um, because electric bills have been missing for, you know, a couple months at this point. 
Um, and then if any trustees or anybody has, you know, specific questions about accounts, um, I apologize for missing the monthly meeting last month. Um, I know there was a quarterly uh, review on there. So if anybody wants to go over it or is interested in specific accounts, um, we can definitely email me, meet with me. Um, you know, we're open. So I want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with the reports and the financial statements. Thank you. I think I think that we did actually, um, and, and Jeff was able to talk us through elements in your stead. So thank you to him. Um, I also want to recognize that you, Michelle, have been um, spending time with the short term rental um, ad hoc group. Um, you and Eliza both um, have been working with with that working group toward um, um, identifying the things that we need to do to have the occupancy tax go into effect, figuring out how we would identify, how we would collect, um, and how the how that occupancy tax is incorporated into the larger short-term rental portion of the village code. So thank you for the time you're spending on that. Is there, were there any, is there anything that you wanted to say about that in particular? Is that uh, no, I think that's it. You know, there's just the considerations that, you know, once the drafts for the STR and the occupancy tax are up, um, you know, we have to think about revenues and expenses to help manage it. Um, but I think it's premature to really dis to know what that's going to be until um, we have drafts of both laws in front of us. Okay. Thank you for working with them. Thank you. Roadways and facilities. Do we have um, Bugsy with us tonight? I don't think I see him. Okay. So um, roadways and facilities have been very, very busy um, cleaning out catch basins, getting ready for winter, um, a large number of them. Um, Let's see, uh, they've been dealing with sidewalks, limbs, um, the rest is equipment details, but two things to take note of for folks on Northern Avenue tonight, we're gonna be, um, I'm gonna be asking the board to approve the signing of an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Kent um, for the repair of this failed storm drain on Northern Avenue that's currently scheduled for November 1st if the board um, authorizes us to enter that agreement. Um, and the roadway survey, um, we have talked with the engineers. They've been very busy with the aqueduct connection, but they are also um, dual tracking our roadway survey so that we go, can spend the winter getting ready for laying out and prioritizing and funding projects in the spring. So that's moving forward too. Um, specifically related to the town of Kent, um, so this agreement, um, it's, uh, it's the intent of the village and the town of Kent to help each other to an equal extent so that no money needs to pass to pay for services or equipment. The idea is each of the of the departments provides the materials needed for a project and we trade labor where we can. So Kent is bringing um, equipment for us to use to work on Northern Avenue and labor to do that work. And then our team um, will go to Kent to help in, with an equal number of hours and the idea the secondary idea here is that it, um, the relationship acts as a mentoring tool for our highway crew, for our roadways and facilities crew. So um, the village attorney and the attorney for the town of Kent um, set out the intermunicipal agreement that's in front of us. Um, and I would ask for a motion from the, first of all, any discussion or any questions about the intermunicipal agreement itself. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, well, then would someone like to make a motion to authorize me to sign that agreement? Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Really glad to get this done. Yeah. Um, and I'll follow up with contacting the Homeowners Association for Spring Brook. Um, lastly, from Bugsy, we had, um, we had a summer laborer, um, Mo Williams who has been with us all summer. He's been doing excellent work. Um, Bugsy would like to shift him into the regular part-time position, the position we created created in this year's budget. Um, it, the, the one really excellent thing about um, Mo is that he brings um, mechanical experience. He, was, he changed the brakes and the rotors on a couple of vehicles. Um, and that was a spot we were really missing in roadways and facilities. Um, this would be flexible, flexible hours. He does have another another part time job, um, so 
he and Bugsy are comfortable with working out his schedule on a week to week basis. I'm comfortable with that as well. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we um, hire Mo for the vacant part time position at a rate of $20 an hour. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks for being with us, Mo. Welcome to the team. <laughs> yeah. Okay, water and wastewater. Do we have Matt? Oh, uh, yes, I'm here. Hi, want to give us an update on the state of our reservoirs and your recommendations? Uh, well, still pretty much status quo. We lost an additional 5% in the reservoirs from sending water down the hill. So uh, the reservoir status is currently at around 56 and a half as opposed to the 61 and a quarter that we started the month with. But as everyone knows, the engineers are working with getting the connection going on that. So hoping it moves forward faster or we get a lot of rain, hopefully tomorrow and scheduled. Uh, but moving on past that, the bacteriological tests for the month were good. Uh, just went over the reservoirs. Done a lot of in-house maintenance up at the water plant, starting with the pneumatic system, uh, basically the air that drives all the actuators, valves, uh, pretty much how the treatment plant works. So we've done oil changes, air filters uh, on the compressors and the blowers. Uh, we've replaced two valves, three actuators, four positioners on the all three filtration units to get them back up to running 100%. Uh, the dehumidification system that's been offline, uh, Jared and I put some time into it, Jared mostly, uh, and we have it up and running. So it's been running for about a week. We've watched the humidity going down inside the building. So hopefully that'll prolong our equipment life uh, moving forward. Uh, the Badger endpoint upgrade, SACS metering. We had the meeting uh, last week with them on site. They're hopefully trying to get everything generated to get it scheduled before the holidays and get it all wrapped up before the sunset date and at the end of the year. Uh, storage tank still getting procurement for that, trying to get it. Most people are trying to just do inspections and then talk repairs. So we're probably going to have to go that route to get that moving a little bit faster. And the said basin still needs to be done, but hopefully that'll be getting done in the next week. Great. Uh, it sounds like having an extra set of hands has been a, been a big help. A uh, huge help, huge help. Um, so, you know, people have asked about how much rain we got over the last couple of storms. My recollection from right after the storm is you said we got about um, 0.8 inches, not even a, a full inch. After, even after Correct, all yeah, we had, yeah, we had about 0.4 the first day of the rain event, the most recent rain event, uh, and then a little bit under 0.5. So yeah, just under one full inch for the month of October so far. And what is your recommendation for um, our current water emergency? Uh, since we are still below, so well, currently still under 60%, we're still pretty much holding steady until we can bolster our supply and get back to running a little bit normal. But I mean, we're sending the water down the hill as slowly as and efficiently as we can, trying to just make as much as we need without uh, letting it go over the spillway. So restrictions, you still, recommend the restrictions stay in place? Uh, yes. I mean, for this time, I mean, Hopefully, with the cooler weather and a couple more more frequent rain events, we'll get out of this faster. Okay, so no, again, yes. no car washing, no house washing, no, yep. no no lawn watering, no garden watering. Please limit your use inside your homes, restaurants. Please don't give water unless requested. Tap water unless requested. Um, and just so that folks know, we are we are keeping an eye on things. Um, the officer on duty today did go. Um, check out a couple of locations that were called in as possible violations. They were not, they were locations with their own, they were, they were projects with their own water sources. Um, but we are, we are very much keeping an eye and we are grateful for everyone's cooperation to stretch the water supply we have as long as we can um, while we wait for the hookup. Thank you, Matt. Um, yep. And going on to discussion of the, the reconnection to the Catskill Aqueduct, we do have a resolution before us tonight um, relating to several parts of that project. Um, one is a seeker finding on the reconnection work. Um, the second is the 
preparation of the land use permit that we need to do the work before the DEC. Um, I'm sorry, for the DEP connection. Um, and the last relates to the preparation of a request for proposals to actually do the work. Um, so, Laura, since you've been working on water issues lately, would you mind reading the resolution that addresses all of those issues into the record? And this is a roll call. Resolution 28. Yes. Resolution number 28 of 2022, resolution of the Village Board of Trustees for the Village of Cold Spring authorizing the village to take certain steps in connection with its application for and land use permit to the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Whereas the village is in the process of seeking approvals for a revocable land use permit from the New York City <laughs> to allow the village to connect to the Caskill Aqueduct as an emergency backup water supply. And whereas the village's connection is proposed on land owned by, the, by New York City and already utilized for water supply purposes, this parcel has an address of number, fish, number, Main Street, I'm sorry. number 380 Main Street. Yes. 380 Main Street with a section block and lot of 38.14-1-1 17. And whereas the village is proposing to install the necessary water connection equipment within an underground vault on the property, and whereas the village has retained the services of James J. Hahn Engineering PC to prepare the permit application and associated plans detailing the connection, and whereas proposed, the proposed connection includes installation of a six inch water main and underground concrete structures, which, which constitutes. Um, whereas the village's consultants have prepared a short environmental assessment form pursuant to, to CICRA, but given the minor work involved, the village classified this work as a type two action under section 617-5C1, uh, since there are no substantial changes in the existing facility, whereas based upon the above, no further environmental review under CICRA is required, whereas the village is also working with James Dehan Engineering PC in, pre in preparing the necessary documents that the village can bid out the work associated with the connection and according to the New York State um, General Municipal Law. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the village of trust by the Board of Trustees that the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the mayor to sign all documentations and applications associated with the permit to allow the connection, subject to final review and approval by the village's engineers, which are James J. Hahn, Engineering PC. The Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the village representatives to submit the permit application once finalized and signed by the mayor. Three, the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the village representatives to continue to work with this engineering consultant in finalizing the necessary documents so that the village can bid out the work associated with the connection in accordance with general municipal law and that the village clerk and or mayor is authorized to sign any documents to effectuate the above. Number four, this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its adoption. Mayor Foley. Aye. Deputy Mayor Woods. Aye. Trustee Fatty. Absent. Trustee Starbuck. Aye. Trustee Bozy. Aye. Officially adopted on the date by a vote of 4001. Yes. So just confirming what we've just done here. We have um, declared this type two under seeker that if you do, the public wants to review that short environmental assessment form, it is part of the public record. Um, the land use permit, we can now put in what remains or where we are in terms of engineering. Um, there is a flush hydrant that needs to be added near the water treatment plant um, that the approval on the final engineering of that is going forward. Um, we're waiting from the final okay from the Putnam County Health Department um, on the site plan submission um, that uh, goes along with the permit. Um, so as soon as we hear back from, from Putnam County, we're, we should be good on that one. And then the legal agreement, we're down to one um, final detail and one paragraph related to um, the dam repair. So we're, we're nearly there on all of it. It all moves apace. Um, and last, underwater and sewer mat, um, water and wastewater mat, um, reference the endpoint update. Yes. Um, so yes, we did meet with um, SACS 
Yep. Uh, can't remember the name of the company. Saxon. 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 Thank you. Um, they are looking to do the work. So again, this is the smart technology that that communicates the information from your electronic meter out to our meter readers for billing and and um, efficient tracking of water use. They're aiming to do the work November seventh through the twelfth, um, and we'll be communicating out through the village via. Um, our website, social media, they'll be sending direct mailings, um, they'll be doing door hangers, all of their crew will be with ID badges, their cars will all be clearly marked, um, and we'll try to get a rough idea of what street they'll be on, which days, and, um, and be posting that. But you should expect to hear from them, every water meter in the village needs to have this change done, they're very efficient um, and quick, so um, They'll do a first round of November 7th to 12th. If there are any that remain outstanding, they'll leave a two week period to try to close the loop on connections with those folks and then come back and finish up before Christmas, before Thanksgiving. Thanks, yep. Matt. Anything else from you? You're good. Uh, no, I think that'll do it for us. Yeah. All right. Good night. You too. Um, code enforcement. Jeff, do you want to, anything from code enforcement that you want to pass on? No, just. Greg and has been doing a great job staying caught up or caught up. He has nothing outstanding for us, so all plans. Permits have been issued. He's been very um, responsive to any issues with code enforcement that have come up. He, um, today, he was out delivering letters to local businesses about, you know, just reminding people of the three foot from the front of the building rule for, for, for placing objects, and that's just to keep the sidewalk safe especially on these busy weekends. Um, supposedly they are hiring someone to do field inspections to a system, which will give Greg more time on the managerial and administrative side of things. So things are, things are moving along well on that. Jeff, sorry, can you just explain that again, the three feet from the, what's the okay, so regulation? The building on Main Street. Yeah. But, but what, three feet from? Three feet from the facade of the building out if they're allowed to have they're it. allowed to signage tables display um okay. goods okay. some areas have been creeping yeah. a bit beyond especially on the weekends yeah so it's just okay. a, a just reminder no so. no violations are yeah. being issued this time it was just yeah. reminding folks well, yeah. yeah this happens every every four or five years yeah yeah okay. well, there's, when there are new business owners too it's good helpful to have a reminder thank you um port of our police department officer in charge larry burke is with us Good evening. Hi. Just a few things and that I wanted to try to mention so I don't forget. Um, for the month of September, we had calls for service 64. Uh, total for, for calls of service for the year to date is 532. Just want to go over a couple of calls that I always try to bring up that are on an up, uptick. Uh, we had a, a uptick of calls on 80 cases this, uh, in the month of September. Um, some of those were mental health incidents, which I'd mentioned at the last meeting, that we're seeing an uptick. And I continue to see that as, a, as an uptick of people calling for uh, uh, mental health issues. Um, so with that being said, uh, I did meet along with the mayor, uh, with the hub representatives, and also Mike Piazza, who runs the Putnam County Mental Health uh, Department. Um, and we're all a, co a collaborative agreement to try to get us uh, some more assistance uh, on the side of the county on the best that we can. We're gonna be moving forward. It's probably gonna be a slow moving process as it always is. But again, at least we're all meeting, we're all contact numbers for each other. And uh, with the hub, we also put in an application for a grant, the hub put in a grant in for, I believe it was $5,000 and we did also through the, through the village and the police department. So that meaning if we get those monies, uh, we would, be able to call them. They'll be on call. Uh, it's not set in stone yet, but what we're talking about is having somebody from the hub be available possibly from four in the afternoon until 10, 11 o'clock at night. If we do have a, a mental health call that uh, we can contact them and get some resources that we may not know about for the, for the individual, for the people that are in this crisis. Uh, so that's where some of the monies are gonna probably go towards. We're still working on that. Uh, and again, it, it, it it's just really, really nice to see us all sitting down, getting together, getting talking to the other side of the county, talking to representatives on what we need on this side of the county and what we're hopefully going to move forward with. 
Uh, again, this is a ground level right now. And as we keep working towards it, um, hopefully it will take off and, and have bigger and better things for us here that we can look forward to. Um, also with the 80 cases, we, if you notice, we have a, uh, an uprise in officer needs assistance calls. So it was 12 uh, for the month with the 80 calls for the mental health issues. Some of them were in the village. Some of them were outside the village. So basically what happens is the patrol, uh, if it's Putnam County and they get a call for mental, like it, it goes down as a violent person, they will respond. One of the village officers will respond within reason outside the village. We're not going to go to Putt Valley or anything like that. We're talking about Nelsonville on neighbors. Uh, we've had we've had a few calls uh, in Nelsonville the last past month on that. Uh, it's been the same uh, individual. So we just want to make sure that the officers are safe. We want to make sure the person that's in crisis is safe until the ambulance gets there, which they have to wait and stage until the uh, the scene is secure, that nobody has any weapons or anything like that. So we've had a little bit uh, extra calls on those. We assisted the MTA on uh, once or twice in the month of September. Uh, we also assisted uh, Putnam County MTA, and I believe there was another agency that we assisted. I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, with that, just if people, don't understand when you do mutual aid, it's exactly like the fire departments. We back each other up to make sure the officers are safe at all times and the people that we're trying to service also remain safe. So I know there's been a question on people saying, well, why don't we charge them for this call or that call? The mutual aid is not like that. We need help constantly, uh, not constantly, I should say that way. When we need help, the sheriff comes in and helps and backs up our officers on different scenes and we do the same for them. So that's called mutual aid. I mean, that's the best way I can explain it like the fire departments do. Well, and the, I will say that there is an essential difference um, between fire and police in that Correct. Cold Spring Fire Company is the, the primary department for Nelsonville and a portion of Phillipstown. That is why Nelsonville and, and Phillipstown contribute to that budget. Mm -hmm. um, but we're when North Highlands comes to help our team and the fire department, we're not getting charged back. Correct. In the same way we are providing secondary assistance, backup assistance to other agencies yep. nearby and not, not being charged by the visit, right? Right, right. So yeah. where, where Cold Spring is primary um, for, for fire um, outside of the village, those portions of Nelsonville and Phillipstown contribute to the fire budget. Yeah, uh, the first responders all help each other out. That's the best way to explain it. Uh, especially in these times, everybody's short. Everybody's short on, uh, on on members, whether it be the fire department or the police department. I've spoken to uh, different uh, sheriffs and, and supervisors and superintendents between state police, Putnam County Sheriff. They're all short. We're all short on, on, on officers out patrolling. Um, I'm not going to speak to the sheriff's office. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying it, it's hard to you know, retain people who are getting ready to retire and to bring in people to the process that we bring in. So we're, we're all here together to help each other out to so make sure we all get home safe at the end of the day. And, and also another report out from that meeting with the hub and with Commissioner um, Piazza. There is a new deputy commissioner for, for mental health at the county level. She comes from Westchester. I cannot pull her name out of my head right at the moment. Um, just consummate professional um, and is hoping to, it's clear that Putnam County is very behind. Um, and very, very much lacking in services. And she's hoping to replicate some of what she was able to do in Westchester here in Putnam. And one of the things that she's instituting right away, which I think is brilliant, I don't know why we haven't been doing it before, is that working with police agencies and social services and mental health um, and ambulance corps, et cetera, identifying who folks are who are frequent, frequent, <coughs> frequently needing help and how those folks are interacting with different agencies. So we had a discussion the other day about a particular you know, case being addressed by different agencies and those agencies didn't know that the others were involved. So having this sort of um, uh, collaborative team to, to share notes so that we're sure that the folks who are needing the help from multiple agencies are getting more holistic response. That's a, that's a good thing. And I think it's gonna work well. We're on the same, the same page. Right yeah. now, the, the, if you want to go that way, the, tell, well, one person know, doesn't know what's going on in the other, like you said, with the county and, and help between cold care, uh, Putnam County Mental Health and, and, the, and the police uh, agencies. 
So we're, we're definitely going to be working on that going forward, which she, she has already said she's going to come out and do a couple of visits with me on some of the people that really need help. I've been needed help for a while uh, and actually really look at the situation and see what we can do. Um, and that will help us uh, going forward. I felt hopeful after meeting with her. Yes. Um, also with the aid calls, just to let you know, aid calls are basically anytime the ambulance is called out, we go uh, in, in the village. So that that's just sometimes that you see the numbers are a little, little high and that could be anything from a person falling down and just needing a lift assist or somebody that uh, needs actual me uh, medical help. We go out to all those calls. Um, so those are the ones I was looking at, uh, the grant proposal we spoke about. Um, we had two arrests in the month of September. We had uh, one for an unlicensed operator, which is VTL 511 you see on your page. Uh, and that was one count. He had a suspended driver's license, so he was he was uh, physically arrested. Um, and also we had a criminal trespass. We had an individual go down to the highway garage, park, uh, park his vehicle there, who also had a suspended license uh, and decided to urinate uh, on our property down at the highway garage. So we've talked about this in the past about people just wandering down there. This is just another example of it being open and people just walking down there and doing whatever they, they please. Um, the moving violations, we had 15 moving violations for the month. We had 82 parking summonses for a total of 97 and a total for the year is 691. Um, a couple of extra things that I be working today that I addressed. I just want to let the people know who are listening. Uh, there's a company that's been walking up and down um, on Route 9D. He has a uh, yellow vest on. He's got proper identifications, and he's going over all of the power wires that are on the poles. I, they started up past Butterfield, and he worked his way down past the uh, softball field on 9D. So he's working for the DOT? The, he's working for the, 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 it's not the DOT, he's working for the state. And he's just actually, I guess, looks like he was taking film of the, uh, or photos of the power lines. I didn't press him on it. He had proper identification. Yeah. I know people were a little bit worried about that. Also, speaking of that, we had a poll that was uh, put out front of Village Hall that everybody seemed to notice and got really a little nervous about, including myself. Um, and it was actually a private company that was um, hired out by uh, the uh, state to do a traffic survey of vehicles turning on Fair Street and vehicles going up and down Main. Uh, I've actually been driving around past outside the village, Nelsonville, and up towards the up to the towards the Highlands, and they put down all of those new uh, counting car strips. There's a lot more out. They're on Pisco Road. They're on Fishkill Road. They're like all over. This thing did the same thing, but he, it, it took a picture of the cars instead of having that rubber strip that we've all run over on occasion. When was, when was that? When was it out? Sorry? When was it out? Oh, that the poll was out there about three days in total, maybe maybe a little longer. I think it was just two. It was very brief, but there was no communication from anyone. So suddenly there was installed. equipment they, installed in front of... With, clearly with a camera in front of Village Hall. And I'd like to... I know that you have the, the companies. Telephone number. I'd like to follow up with that um, yeah. and understand how those. You know, what, what are they doing with the images? What those are village streets. It's not a state road there. I'm I'm still quite confused about what that was. Yeah. I can understand the county roads it being on the county roads, um, but I don't understand why it was on the village road if it was DOT. I will try to get more information on that. Um, uh, that's you know going forward. I'll see okay. if I can get a hold of them. Thank you very much. Uh, and last but not least, we've seen a big uptick in, uh, I want to call them boat people, but that's not, that's not, not uh, proper. Uh, sea streak has been coming. We have a lot more people coming off the boats. Uh, I think believe over the weekend we had the highest number was 375, uh, that came off, I think on Saturday. So and that's I, within the, the, the range that was approved by the board. We said yeah. cap at 400. Yeah. And what they're doing is they, they had four, they had 400 and change and they dropped 120 off at Bear Mountain. So they never even made it to the village, but we're going to see a, a bigger uptick as this is the month of October, the leaders are changing. You need a lot more people that are coming on the boat. We had no incidents so far with, with any, any, um, tourists from the boat or anything like that. So we're, we're still moving ahead with, with that. And we have the walking tour, the extra officer that's on duty that the C Street uh, covers when uh, when they come in. And that's why. Thanks. Um, thank you to, to you guys for helping with. We've had a number of buses coming down Main Street, um, not letting anyone know <laughs> that they're coming. Buses that have, they're way, way too big. Um, Forest buses? Yeah, yeah, big, big buses and having to get them to navigate them out. And the officer, 
who is on duty inevitably does that navigating. So thank you for that. Um, I wish that there were a way that we could communicate out to these companies. Um, I mean, we've attempted, but to let them know that it's not a safe place to bring a mm -hmm. big giant bus. Is there any um, enforcement that can be done on that front? I mean, I, I did see one of those huge buses go down and we were all just shaking our heads because. Yeah. I, I'm kind of like if, if there's something nothing wrong with the bus, either equipment wise or anything like that, I, we can look at at doing some type of enforcement. But you figure if you pull over the bus and you're trying to look at the equipment, you're going to drive them. Someone's going to take that much longer to get them off Main Street. Uh, they well, just what about just just even trying to do like a U-turn, which is I believe what I was witnessing. We try to we try to if we're there on scene, we try to attempt to do it the safest way we possible, which you take them down the lower Main Street, try to have them back up to Depot Square and then back out again. Uh, some of these bus companies are actually uh, some of them don't speak English, uh, and it's a little hard to to uh, get them to do what you want them to do. But like I said, the officers usually do a pretty good job when we know that it's happening. There's sometimes we might be out on a job, and you know, all of a sudden the bus is down there. We don't get a call. We come in, and you know, we find that we find this whole this whole backup thing. Well, this is a, a moment to plug again. This is something. Say something to the public, um, please. If, I know it feels good to, to spout on Phillips Town locals, but the officers don't know that they're needed. If you're not calling us, calling the police department to let us know there's a bus or whatever the issue might be, please, if you if you see something, contact the police, something you need help with, contact the police department. Um, you want the officer right then. If there's something that you need him for, if you don't, I mean, if it's not an emergency, you call 911, but wait to get con connected to this officer's cell phone. We carry a cell phone on us. Every officer does. And that gets you direct because we come up. I've come up in the end of the shift at three thirty, and it was a phone call at eleven o'clock saying they needed assistance on something. It was an emergency. It was a block driver or whatever. You will have a prompt where you can hit the button, and it'll, it'll, it'll ring the cell phone that the officer is carrying, so we know that you need us now. I can't wait till the end of the day and go up, and then you're wondering what we're doing. Thank you, Larry. Um, and would you like to talk us through? Um, uh, Police Officer Sierra's um, current request. Yes, uh, Officer Sierra has been with the village I believe, approximately 27 years now, somewhere around there. Um, and he's decided that he wants to put in his retirement papers so he can get his pension. Um, so he, he gave us uh, his resignation, which is you know, re kind of a retirement notice, uh, effective October 3rd, 2022. And he also submitted a letter that he would like to be reinstated as of the Fifth, I believe, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. As of October fifth. Can you explain why yeah. that structure exists? The structure exists so the, the officer can uh, basically all all the time that he's worked in the village, he's built up a pension. So what he wanted to do now and um, is to retire from that, collect his pension, and then be rehired by the village as a per diem. Per diem basically is any any law enforcement officer in the state of New York that collects a pension, like myself. We retire from our our my as I did, I retire from a full time job. I get hired by the village to come, and when I come in, I only get paid per diem. You're not paying any more retirement funds from myself or any other law enforcement. So, in fact, it would save the village money if we did hire Officer Ciro back or Tom Ciro at this point, hire him back because he's been here. Uh, he's had no issues whatsoever, any disciplinary since I've been here in 10 years and since I've been the officer in charge in 2017. Uh, he's an excellent officer, and you know, he, he, to lose him, we'd be losing experienced officer that we have that knows the village, knows the people that live and work here. So the idea is that he uh, retires from full-time work, collects his pension. Right. He is limited, all officers, a, a, a number of categories of public servants in New York State are limited in the amount that they can earn in a year right. up to okay. every, so they hit a ceiling beyond which you cannot fund your pension. Right. So he and on a per diem basis can work up to his ceiling while collecting his pension. Correct. We have numerous so officers is, that and we're no longer paying into his pension. It's a procedural formality required by New York State retirement system. Yeah. So he has to be off the payroll. I believe it's two business days in order for them to process and everything so that he can start collecting his pension. And that's why we do it like this. We've done it in the past with other officers that yeah. quite a few of them. And, um, and it's cheaper for us because we're not paying yeah, into the system we, anymore. Why right. we stop paying into the system, he could collect his pension. And the only downfall, there is a cap on 
how much he can how earn. How much he can like, earn. Correct. Right. Well, how much he can earn over the course of the year. I think it's how much you can earn. Not yeah, no, how much you can earn over calendar year. Yeah. But now we have a larger number of officers on duty. There's a possibility for him to retire. Yes. Right, because he doesn't have to carry the weight of as many ships. Any discussion of that request? Okay. Um, is this a roll call or just a motion and? Motion. Okay, so I will make a motion that we um, accept the resignation of police officer Tom Sierra effective October 3rd, and that we uh, re inquest, re, excuse me, reinstate um, Tom Sierra as a police officer in the village effective October 5th. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Mm -hmm. Fire company. Um, I've got, got an old pack. Can I look on with you? Please. Hello, Chief. Uh, uh, 17 calls last month. Now that the colder weather's here, just before you fire up your wood stoves and fireplaces, whatever, just check your chimneys. Yeah. Smoke detectors, carbon dioxide. I'll try to keep those call numbers down for us. Mm. And that's all I got. Change your batteries, right? Yep. Um, you've, been, you've been doing a ton of mutual aid. Yeah, it's just the way the month went. What is AFA, North Highlands for an AFA? Uh, fire alarm. Automatic Activated alarm. fire alarm. Yeah. So. Okay. Any questions for the chief? Can you just add the brush fire? Was... It was called a brush fire. It was a campfire that was already out okay. at, uh, I want to say Little Stony Point, but I'm not positive. Okay. So it, it wasn't like a true brush fire. Okay. But it could have been. Yeah. <laughs> if we're lucky it wasn't. Yeah, nothing, nothing to worry about. An unattended fire. By the way, there are no, there are to be no fires lit at Stony Point, for the record. Correct? correct. No, can't, no yeah. fires allowed. Yeah, especially in a drought. Especially in a drought. Okay. Yeah, the brush fire slash dead body. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Multiple iterations of that story went through the village pretty quickly. None of them, none of them true. <laughs> um, okay, Justice Court. Um, so what Officer Burke reported in terms of. Uh, vehicle and traffic violations are reflected in the, the court report this month. Um, 21 charges, one penal, the rest for traffic, 18 defendants, um, income of $8,312. Okay, standing boards. Um, I believe Sean is not with us this evening, just very quickly. Um, HGRB. Um, it's been it's been slow um, on all of our boards. I think that the interest rates are are, <laughs> are hitting everybody. There's it's not there aren't as many applications as we might see in other other times. Um, HDRB looked at a two story addition on 12 Parrot Street, um, and I want to thank the historic district review board because um, now that we are all required to have quorum in public. We were all on Wednesday nights. They were able to accommodate us by moving to Tuesdays so that um, we don't have overlap for the for the recording and broadcast system. So thank you to them. Planning board, I believe we have Chairman Goldstein with us. Hi. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the planning board was largely occupied in September um, in various proposals uh, at 40 Main Street, we approved through a public hearing a change of the site plan, and we are considering now, uh, and we'll tomorrow night uh, uh, be acting on a, a public hearing for a ch uh, an additional change of views. Um, other than that, we we were occupied during the month with a preparation for the joint with preparation with the joint uh, planning board and uh, village trustees meeting on um, Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail. That was pretty much it for the month. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, ZBA had no activity, but I will say that um, Chair Worth and I met with um, a couple of interested villagers for the open seat on the ZBA, vacated by Trustee Bozy. Um, we will be making a recommendation to the trustees for next week, um, two really excellent candidates. So um, we'll get that on the agenda for next week. 
um, tree advisory board. Um, no report, Jen isn't able to join us and she asked Eliza um, to share about an initiative for tree pits. Yep. Um, so we've been working, this sort of started last year with the adopt a tree pit program. That was a collaboration between the tree advisory board, which <coughs> served as um, sort of an advisor on how to plant the pits to support the health of the trees. Um, and then the chamber was um, a major component of helping organize volunteers, getting volunteers and um, sort of getting everyone to come. Um, and part of that initiative started with um, the Cold Spring in Bloom initiative that the chamber proposed last year and are, will be continuing hopefully next year. Um, the idea was to have the tree blooming in April, um, but because only bulbs bloom at that time, we didn't have anything last this year. So um, in continuing of that program, we want to put bulbs in to all the tree pits that are that don't have bulbs already. Um, and the chamber has offered to sponsor all the bulbs, um, which was very generous of them. The tree advisory board is going to continue to sort of advise how to plant appropriately, not to damage the roots. Um, and we have a new volunteer, um, Aaron Muir has stepped up to help organize volunteers between the village volunteers and the chamber's volunteers and make sure everybody knows where to be at what time and how to do it. Um, so that's uh, really exciting. If anyone wants to volunteer to help plant bulbs, um, we're aiming to do it in November, hopefully mid-November. Um, the latest you can do plant bulbs is early December, but it has to happen before the frost. So we hope to get this done before then. Awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. And um, the Rec Commission asked for that to be extended down around the bandstand as well for some fresh bulbs around the bandstand and um, we'll see the C board and the chamber, sorry, the C tab, the tree board <laughs> and the chamber working on that too. Thank you very much. Um, Jen will have an update for us. Um, she said she would follow up with a report on the Bosco Bell tree initiative when she has it. Um, Recreation Commission. A few things with REC. Um, we have a couple of things to close out. We tabled an event last week pending clarification on uh, speakers, tents, and uh, in the meantime, they requested podium. So they're modifying the application. This is the Phillips Town Democrats um, wanting to have two small speakers. Um, and a tent over them if it's raining, and they forwarded a um, plan of McConville Park where they would like to put a stage in four by six by 15 inches. We have run all of these things by the Rec Commission, and Lily and the Rec Commission had no problem with that, right? So with that information, um, any additional concerns? Um, we have a motion. Um, so the motion is for the, the uh, approval of the application with the modifications of speakers. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Tents and the, and the sound and sound. Okay. So I'll make a motion for approval of the Phillips Town Democrats uh, event on October 23rd um, with the uh, changes in uh, Okay. Uh, in application. In application. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yep. Um, and the other I don't have paperwork for, but we also approved an application last week for was it last week, two weeks ago? Um, yeah. For um a birthday park at um Mayor's Park. And when the insurance papers came in, there was insurance for ponies. Um, ponies were not part of, part of the application. Um, so <laughs> Lily will be event coordinator, <laughs> followed up with the applicant um, and with the rec commission to make sure the rec commission was okay with that. Um, they are so long as um, the ponies stay in the pavilion portion and not on the playing field um, and that everything is cleaned up after the ponies and that if there is any grass restoration, the applicant will be responsible. 
the applicant has agreed to all of those things. So looking for just making sure that that the trustees are comfortable with what the board, the excuse me, the rec commission has has said okay to. We just um, discussed continuance of dogs off leash with a permit. Mm -hmm. Is there any? But the points are beyond lead. I know, but just dogs and dogs. Oh, oh, no. She she requested the use of both Mayor's Park, the pavilion area, and the field, and her thought was that. The field would then be closed, that public would not be down there. I don't think she understands that, you know, if somebody wants to walk their dog, they're going to park. We're not going to, we yeah. can't close people um, down there. I don't have a sign that says the field's closed. I don't have a sign that says the pavilion's closed for the, to the public. So um, so I will reiterate that to her. She said that they're, they, that was her idea, and that the only thing that they were really going to do on the field is maybe a pickup soccer game in that far back corner at towards the end. It sounds like it's going to be a very small party. So the magician involved, I know that. The magician now involved. Um, quite a birthday uh, party. Yeah. yeah. But your concern is about yeah. dogs off leash? I Yeah. Yeah. Just if they had thought through a way to, if they recognize that there could be dogs at the same time. So, well, the one thing with Bears Park, the, the, do the dogs are usually on the major part of the field, uh -huh. and there is that fence area. Okay. So, you would hope that whoever is with the dog, even though the dog is off lead, the dog, they will have some control of their animal. Okay. Um, I will mention that to her when I email her tomorrow to tell her that everything is fine and dandy, hopefully. Um, and make sure that she passes that information on to the uh, what is one the pony pony wrangler? <laughs> How many ponies? No clue. I, it's, I imagine it's a small number. It's a small it's, small party. I think she said. I think she said there's only gonna be like eight kids at this party. Five kids at this party. Hold the meeting to talk at pony show. <laughs> <laughs> but does anyone have any do you have any Laura, does your concern extend to wanting to decline? No, I just think like making making sure that the pony it company is, knows yeah. that it's a public park and that there's the potential for dogs. And... Okay. Do we have any I mean not to be like a party pooper, <laughs> but like has this ever happened before? Like have we ever has not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm, I mean, not not in my time living in the village. The the rec commission felt, and they, at least two of the rec commission members have been members for thirty years. Um, they had they didn't have hesitation about it so long as the applicant understood that they would have to um, replace any damaged lawn. We did have a horse incident about a year or so ago yeah. down on by the bandstand. Right. Mike, do you know anything about that? Yeah. He's not even lifting his head. Oh, it's Canadian, not even lifting his head. <laughs> um, that was not in the park, however. No. I believe the application. Our applications allow there, for... Yeah, on the non in the policies and procedures. As part of the application form, there is a paragraph that talks about live animals. And wow. the need for insurance. And the need for insurance. It's it's in the same area as the inflatables and wow. that stuff. And that's what happened. She read, so she asked me for information about the insurance she needed for the pavilion. And I literally said, well, this is the quote about in the policies and procedures that you received for the application. She must have went back to check it. And she saw the paragraph about the live animals and said, oh, I can have money. Good idea. Well, I have asked Jeff, um, I can't believe how much time we're spending on this. I have asked <laughs> Jeff um, Amato and Lillian to create a section of the application that asks for specific activities, installation yeah. of toys, live animals, et cetera, um, so that we're, <laughs> we're not caught unawares again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure at this point the child knows. And, my thought is not wanting to break the child's heart. Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah. So yeah. okay, so uh, I would make a motion to allow um, the use of ponies at this party and um, to request the rec commission and the event coordinator to modify 
the application is appropriate. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, last thing on reference, just letting you know, we are um, proceeding with Haldane on the um, shared use agreement of the parks at, of the fields at Mayor's Park. Haldane has just sent back um, a revised intermunicipal agreement. I need to send it to the attorney, and then we'll be on our agenda for, for approval. Um, okay, put on rec. Um, I don't think, I think the Phillips Town has a workshop tonight. I don't think we have Bob with us, right? No. Um, I would just say highlight, one highlight from Bob's report is congratulate villager Tony Bardis for being appointed to the conservation board. Um, so the deputy supervisor's report is in the record if people would like to read through it. Um, from the legislator, coming back to some of the issues that Larry raised earlier about um, Mental health, the county is in its budget cycle right now. A one, nearly $180 million budget um, is proposed for the county. It's quite a contrast with what we deal with on the local level. Um, it's a, a million point three increase over last year's budget. Legislator Montgomery did ask for um, $25,000 to develop a mental health first aid program um, for training for communities all across the county. Um, one of the things that we discussed in our session with the commissioner the other day is supporting neighborhoods and um, that are are experiencing neighbors with mental health issues um, and and helping everyone in the community around um, and also preparing preparing folks on their own to deal with um, someone who might need help in their lives. So this program was proposed by Legislator Montgomery and it was um, roundly. Um, dismissed by her colleagues. So let's we'll see where the rest of the 180 million goes. We could use we could definitely use more support for mental health at the local level. Uh, okay, report of the trustees. Um, Laura, you want to tell us about water stuff you're working on and the EV charger? Yeah. Um, so on water. Um, I'm working with um, language from Beacon that creates a um, kind of a ratcheting up system for how to um, address a water, a drought water emergency, rather than we just have kind of on or off, but this would create levels of increasing amounts of restrictions. So um, the language um, I've talked with Matt, um, uh, and gotten feedback and so hope to have something in the next little while. I'll awesome. present. Um, uh, EV charger? Yeah, EV charger. If it's okay, um, Martha, can I introduce Martha yeah, Upton? Hi, Martha. Martha. I don't, um, you have patiently waited through this meeting. So Martha is um, uh, the town of Phillips Town's new climate smart coordinator and um, just a real asset to the town and um, uh, that, that we're part of. Um, so is leading the overall work on climate smart um we're collaborating in a number of ways one of them is on this ev charger um that again it's town funding we would collaborate to cite it here in the village um we're still working on the language for the um uh site agreement don't have it yet to share but expect to in the next couple of weeks we need to have it signed and we're able to do it by the end of the month in order for the town to get its funding and you did a, a site visit and explored some options, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, so we did a site visit with a couple of representatives from Central Hudson and I had an electrician, um, uh, Supervisor Van Tassel was there, Martha and I, um, and we were looking at a couple of locations, um, the municipal lot, um, Mayor's Park, um, you know, what looks to the kind of layman's eye as a great location, then you hear from the utility company that that pole is fully occupied and is not an option or you know it would have to it would trespass over private property if it went through the air I mean things that honestly I had never considered so it took some things off the table and added some new ones but I think at this point we're trying to figure out what's viable the good news is that Central Hudson pays 90 percent of the installation costs as long as we follow their rules correctly so we're making sure that we do that and it means that even if it is something that has a high installation cost for us, we're paying 10% and dividing it by both municipalities, it comes out to be pretty affordable. 
also we have grants through the, those nice started clean energy grants. So, you know, I, I think the cost will be okay. We just have to figure out something that turned out to be fairly complicated. Um, uh, and um, so I'd love, I think that in the next couple of weeks, we'll have the details to be able to share, um, share with all of you. And you had a, um, you had a public meeting this week? Yeah. Um, uh, so we had a webinar. Um, uh, we had a webinar that was kicking off this, this heating and cooling campaign in collaboration with the state. Um, and uh, it was successful. We had about 30 people um, turn out and listen for the whole hour and a half, which was really impressive. Um, and, uh, and now, um, again, we're looking for if five places uh, install a heat pump or do an energy efficiency audit and an upgrade, then the village gets $5,000. Um, climate wins. Uh, it's a good program. Um, and there's uh, more information on the village website about that. Is um, the presentation that was made available on the website, it, or do we have a link for it? Um, it will be uploaded onto the website. Um, uh, right now, the town of Phillips, a, a previous one is available there too. Okay. And maybe there's a way we could probably, maybe Jeff, I could work with you to make a clear link on the village website. Yeah, just yeah. Um, the link okay. on the presentation. We'll get yeah. Okay, great. Um, And maybe I'll just say since uh, Martha made me think of it. I mean, I think the next we're getting our head wrapped around all the clean energy communities grants and, and all of that. And then I think the next phase that we can move toward is um, looking at climate becoming a climate smart community, awesome. which would be, I think, a great thing that we would support in general. And then the, the plus for us on the funding side is that it would give us more points if we um, uh, they offer yearly um, uh, grants. Uh, we'd be more competitive for them. And they're on the mitigation side, the kind of clean energy side, but they're also on the adaptation side. So we could look at one that's dealing with stormwater or some of the other impacts awesome. that we're seeing along the coastline. So um, I think that's something that um, I'll be chatting with Martha about and others in the village that are engaged on this. I'm sorry. Cool. Martha, thank you for working so closely with the village in collaboration. Do you have anything to add? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Can I just ask you a question? Um, on the EV chargers, is that for all? Um, oh, like all brands? All, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Yeah. Yep. It'll be all brands. Um, so uh, I think it was kind of touched on earlier. Um, Catherine and I and um, Jen Zwarek met with Granicus again and got another update from them. We got more in depth on how their um, modules that support tax collection work. Hmm. Um, and we got, um, yeah, more detailed information about how um, the different modules work together. So you can track um, who's compliant, how much usage is being done, how much tax is owed generally. Um, and you know they continue to impress us we we walked in there with a lot of questions they answered all of them um and we brought we had met with michelle as well to get her questions because yeah. she was um concerned about things that she needed for proper recording um of tax collection so um they can provide everything we need generally um and so we're looking into uh next sort of writing a room tax legislation to look at for the board um and then jen is also working with the fdr group to update the fdr code so we'll have more on that later awesome um and i think that's it i'm kind of working with Catherine and you kathleen to do a parking evaluation of main street as a Preliminary to get um, meters up, but we, we were but just starting the calendar. Too. Yeah, um, but I will say it's um, it's been very helpful to have to have you looking at crosswalks and actual counts and finding even identifying spots where we could possibly extend um, parking locations. It's been it's been very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, tweets. Hey. Um. Well, I was working on vacation, um, 
so that's what I've been doing for for a bit. But um, I've been working mostly on internal um, stuff in terms of staffing and internal management of processes and such in the village. So it's not not glamorous, pretty necessarily visible to all, but it's slowly making changes and and um, helping to make the the work that that our folks do um, shine in its glory and um, and help the village work better and more efficiently. So you know that's the kind of stuff that I've been doing recently. Thank you. I will have more to report. <laughs> there's um there's very little about any of these positions that's glamorous. It's true. Just in case anyone's <laughs> considering. Um, okay, I have a couple small things to report on short-term rentals. Um, there was a federal appeals court ruling in Louisiana recently that may have ramifications on our code writing. Um, it struck down restriction of owner occupied SDRs only. Um, but that has been forwarded to the village attorney and the short-term rental committee. Um, and it's been under discussion in Rhinebeck, but seeing what modifications need to be made based on that ruling, which sets legal precedent. Um, the Sandy Galef grant final documentation will be in by the end of the week. I did have a conversation with the main Ways and Means um, staff member who is moving that grant forward um, and feel really good about the conversation. Um, and last, which is really excellent news. Um, so the uh, code update was partially funded with a grant from NYSERDA. Um, the chapter 134, the zoning code was not completed. Um, we have been working with a small working group on finalizing that and did ask for an extension from NYSERDA. And today they agreed to give us until the end of June, um, which is great. Um, the that, that code update working group with the current zoning board chair, the former zoning board chair, um, member of the former code update committee and our village planner has been meeting every two weeks um, and looking toward revising our zoning code in ways that are um, more in keeping with the vision of the comprehensive plan and the LWRS in terms of um, form-based zoning um, and rationalizing the code in ways that make it more um, User friendly for the built reality of our village. Um, so I'm very pleased that we have that extra time. We have to use it very wisely. Um, and so tomorrow's session will be given over to tightening tightening our timeline and making sure we meet that deadline. But I'm I am much relieved um, with that because that is budgetary relief. Everything for me on that. Um, we have a little bit of board business. Um, we were approached by the owner of 37 Fair Street, the formal, former in Pelletieri um, uh, car dealership, which is now a living space and an art studio at the end of Northern Avenue on Fair Street. We've been approached about selling um, village property behind that parcel that abuts um, the highway department. Several trustees did a site visit, wanted to get your feedback from your site visit. Um, yeah, I, the property is kind of squished between backyards and the back wall, back sort of shelf of the highway department, and there's really nothing that could be done with that piece of land. It, it really just looks like an extension of their backyard. It's kind of landlocked. Yeah, so I don't see that selling it would harm the village in any way or prevent any future developments that we, you know, chose to do on that highway department lot or something. Same way. I have photos, but honestly, I don't think you could. <laughs> it's hard to really see Maybe. property lines, but and, and I did the site bit as, as well. I feel the same. Um, my concern would be how the one concern I have is the retention of the, of the slope down to the highway department. Um, and I know it had been discussed with her um, previously that a condition of the sale would be the installation of a retaining wall. Um, so we would need to have further conversations on that. Um, so, so tonight we would be um, taking up the question of, are we declaring this, this property um, surplus and are we willing to sell it and the price at which we will sell it. And we have been selling 
properties at $4.65 um, since January when we were advised a new price by the town assessor. So um, would someone like to make a motion? So moved. That's sufficient, go ahead. Well, we should do this in stages, declared surplus property. Individual and, votes? Okay. So and then it doesn't have to be roll call, but just individual, yeah, individual votes. Okay, so and then for the sale price. Okay, I make a motion to declare the property surplus to the village. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, what was the second piece in addition to the price? Sale price. Oh, sale price. Establishing the sale price. I'll make a motion to establish the sale, the sale price consistent with other recent sales of village property at $4.65 a square foot. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay. That's, and that's everything. For, oh, and the retaining, the retaining, the retaining wall will come back as a condition of the. He keeps saying it now that. It will be a condition? Yes. So I would make a motion that. Um, the construction of a retaining wall be condition of the sale. Um, I asked, well, no, just mm -hmm. that we discussed it briefly mm -hmm. on the site visit, and my recollection was that they said that they wanted to do a kind of identify whether it was necessary, which is not surprising, uh, yeah. rather than make it a, an automatic condition to create one. So, um, I, anyway, I that yeah. may be part of the discussion. I mean, I think, I think our, it, it can be a discussion. We'd have we could we could have, but I think we have to we have to watch out for the interests of our property down oh, below. I yeah. I agree, but and I wonder if there's a way. Do we does our motion need to incorporate that discussion, or do we, or do you want to make is it, it a just concern as, about? Is it a concern about a wall in itself? Like, are you thinking about leaving it open for alternative methods, or? Um, would you like to amend the motion? Yeah, I guess I'm just <laughs> trying to think through. Um, it, like, if it sounds like our motion is requiring is requiring a wall, and maybe that's um, you could table that portion okay. of it and maybe ask the engineers to weigh in. No, that's a good idea. I th my understanding was that they wanted to once they knew that they could purchase it then. They would do and then like they would have it evaluated. So does they in this the scenario is the property owner. purchase? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we would want to have our engineer make that conclusion. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Um I think it may need a, a I think for being prudent um, yes. and making sure that the wall is structured as maybe. So I'm I'm not pushing back against that. Understood. So we will table yeah. the portion related to retaining wall pending consultation with the engineer. Yeah. For what it's worth, the previous board in their yeah. initial discussions was in favor of a okay. retaining wall there as protection mm -hmm. for the highway department property. And if everyone else wants to move forward with it as That's as you true. first propose, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Well, I think that it's worth the point you raise is worth looking at for this reason. It is a it is a very large slope. It could be a very large wall, um, and there may be other design solutions for slope retention that don't require a wall of that size. That might be more, um, might have be, be less impactful from from a visual perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's reasonable to ask the question. Or Han may advise a certain height wall, right. or you know, it's yeah. great to have some specification. Okay. Thank you for that guidance, Clerk. Um, we have reached, oh no, minutes, approval of minutes. Mm -hmm. No, what have I skipped? Oh, ticketed event. So um, the Rec Commission had a, an initial conversation with um, uh, Lauren from the Putnam County Wine and Food Fest that just happened in August. Um, I think there was some miscommunication on the part of the rec commission because it um, they communicated to her that the village was considering not holding events at Mayor's Park and that she should instead apply for Dockside. Is that an accurate assessment of the conversation? Event coordinator well, Lillian? Okay. Um, my feeling is that, first of all, this is very early to ask for, but secondly, 
what I intended in that conversation was that we have Michelle compile our income versus expense, including staff time, um, to see if we are actually making money on these events. And that's um, what I told her. Yeah. <laughs> so my recommendation, she's, she's eager, um, and she does note at the bottom that she would prefer Mayor's Park. My recommendation is to table this, um, complete, make a formal request to Michelle to compile those numbers and reassess after we have that, um, and we do that analysis. That's a good idea. Okay, so I've made the motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, now we're at minutes. Um, I gave the changes to Jeff for 8-12. Does anybody else have any revisions? Okay, so I make a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes of 8-12-2022. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And there you go. Um, uh, um, changes. No changes? Okay. Right. So I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of 831. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have bills? So you, we do have a staff, yes? Mm -hmm. We got the other version first? Yeah, I have the older version. Um, make I'll make the motion. Go ahead. Make a motion to approve um bills batch number six 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 eight with the amount of forty seven thousand dollars three hundred thirty seven and eighty cents. Second. Um, favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. There's no public left. Yeah. Would any of you oh, remaining in the room like to make like, 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 leave? <laughs> no questions? Okay. Anyone in the room? I'm going to hold you to that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. In that case, meeting meeting well well done all. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks for Thank sticking you. it out well beyond your appointed time in the agenda. Yeah, I always get a question. Shocking. I think but the public kind of dropped off. Yeah, I was boring, boring, boring. <laughs>